welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're gonna be talking about followers. Now, I know that followers is kind of already an exhausting topic to hear about, especially for artists who are already putting so many of their hours into their work. But the truth of the matter is, is that if you are like a business owner or somebody who is trying to promote their brand and you're an independent artist trying to get your stuff out there, followers could give you a gauge of how well an audience is responding to the work that you're posting or the type of brand or personality that you are tying in with your art. So it could mean a lot of things, but if you are someone who's trying to start a business or brand, it could be a good measurement. But however, I also want to remind you guys that followers are not correlated to your worth, your value as a human, because I know plenty of professional artists out there who have amazing arts, but the numbers of followers they have on their social media like do not match up to their capabilities. So just remember that followers are not always tied to your skill levels as an artist and in general your overall worth. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about this phase of Instagram I feel like a lot of artists, including myself, went through where we were just constantly losing followers over time or you were just plateauing and not growing at all. But I found a way out of it, I think. And that's what I'm gonna talk about in today's video. But, but before I get too deep into that, I first wanted to give a shout out and thank today's sponsor, Casetify. So I'm sure most of you have heard about Casetify as it's one of the world's most popular tech accessory brands known for their protective phone cases and collaborations with influencers around the world. I feel honored to have received some of their phone cases myself, including their brand new crystal clear phone case that is optimized to prevent yellowing and an upgrade from their ultra impact case in terms of clarity and UV defender technology. It's minimal yet strong in the sense that it can withstand a drop from 6.6 .6 feet above ground, and trust me, even after watching many other people do the drop test, I myself was still nervous from doing this myself, but as promised, my phone survived. The phone cases are also MagSafe compatible, so you can still charge your phone with a charging brick or wireless charging station, and you can also accessorize your phone case with things like their utility strap or other accessories that you can find on Casetify's website. Anyway, thanks to Caseify for sponsoring today's video. If you want to get 15% off your order, you can check out the link in the description box below. So in the past two years, I've noticed that a lot of artists, including myself, have pretty much been sharing the fact that they've been losing followers over time or they were just simply not growing. So that eventually led to some artists either plateauing or just not growing at all and losing followers. So my personal hypothesis from the reasons that are out of our control is that first, I feel like once Instagram started leaning into their short form content is when there was kind of more of a struggle to post artwork, especially for artists who are already creating the art piece itself and now they have to create a whole video for it to supplement their work too. So that created additional work and thus took up more time and I felt like some artists eventually became too paralyzed to really post as frequently as they once did. And when you post less, Instagram, doesn't push your stuff out as much anymore so that affects the algorithm and how often you appear in the explore page or in people's searches. In addition to that, I just think it's unfortunate that the truth is a lot of our followers are also just bots or at least a good percentage of them are bots and spam accounts and I think Instagram is constantly just clearing them out. And in general, I do think that there was a growing frustration towards Instagram in the past few years which thus led to a lot of people people deleting their accounts, deactivating, and that also will reduce your follower account as well. So that's just pretty much what I think from just the overall broad scope of social media, but I want to talk about why I feel like I personally started losing followers on a more specific to my personal experience as an artist on social media angle. And because I got to a place where I finally started to grow in followers again, instead of just always losing, I feel like now I kind of realized what I was doing wrong then versus what I'm doing now. So one of the first reasons why I think I began losing followers, this was starting in late 2020, I would say November 2020. That was when I first started a new role in my animation career where I was able to storyboard and then eventually assistant direct for Oni, which 
which was created at Tonko House and now streaming on Netflix. So definitely check it out if you got the chance and want to see what has been consuming my time those past two years. So once I started this gig, I had a lot less time to work on my own personal projects, but I still wanted to upkeep with my social media platforms and still exist and have a presence. So to do that, I had to severely reduce the quality of the comics that I was producing. I was once more known for making succubishes on my Instagram, which is a thematic pink colored comic. But once I started this new gig, I had to just be like, girl, you gotta, make simpler, more minimalistic comics if you want to make this sustainable. So I leaned into this style of comics that I call doodle bishes because they are doodly, they are kind of like journal jottings. However, I felt like this was just not that successful because it was a change that I don't think a lot of people were ready for. Overall, the style of doodle bishes is less complex, it's more minimal, and a lot of people tend to like my comics more for the storytelling aspect but Doodle Bishes was kind of more like just random thoughts or lists of things that I think about, like, enjoy, kind of things that you would take notes of for yourself in your journal or whatever you write. So I do think that changing the style abruptly of my comics was one of the first reasons I began losing followers. So the next reason I feel like this happened was because everything in my feed was too unified. So I did make another video called why your art doesn't get likes or views which is more about the specific posts in your platform more so than your overall profile I guess so check that video out if you want to know more about why I feel like certain posts that you do don't get likes views or as much engagement I feel like when I made my feed a little bit too unified in the doodle bishes style it kind of polarizes people and when they go on your page they're either like they like this or they don't and I feel like this is a style that maybe would be more understandable to artists but for a general audience with no artistic cartooning illustration background it might not be as engaging to them so it is a quicker decision for them to decide to not want to follow my page whereas when I mix up the different posts that I have on my feed, it gives people the opportunity to be curious and click onto something. And lastly, I feel like it was hard for me to grow followers during this time period because along with my job and the fact that I was making these comics that were already super minimalistic and most likely unappealing to new audience members, I was only posting once a week, which honestly, I feel like once a week should be good enough, but you know, social media just wants that attention money so posting once a week definitely did not help me at all but posting once a week for me was still better than doing nothing like I'm still here on Instagram today so at least I made it through but I will say that when I made the Doodle Bishes comics, it's like, you know, the first page of it is just a very minimal drawing. It doesn't really stand out when it's on the explore page. And the fact that I was already posting only once a week, it wasn't gonna be pushed out onto the explore page as much because people are not gonna be interested. And if they do see it, it is more likely to be ignored, which then thus domino effects on all of my futures doodle bishes posts but regardless i don't want to just say that doodle bishes was like the worst period of my social media art phase it was actually just not performing well on social media but the moment that i made it a book is when it actually performed well and if y'all are interested you can definitely check it out on my Etsy shop. So with Doodle Bishes, ironically, even though it didn't do well on social media, it actually did pretty well once I printed it into the form of a book. So I self-published these books and when I sold them at Lightbox Expo, they pretty much were the first ones to sell out compared to my Sucky Bishes books. So I will say that even though there is art that you post on social media, and if it doesn't do well on social media, it doesn't mean it's always bad. Again, like I said, maybe there's a different medium that was more meant for it and for Doodle Bishes, their physical form 
probably was more engaging than their social media form. So just don't always take what you post online and how well it does to heart because it's still something you made and I feel like that's something you should still be proud of at the end of the day. So this period of me just losing followers over time just ended up taking up between I would say November of 2020 to September of 2022. It was almost around two years that I was just straight up losing followers and not really gaining much from it and honestly I almost just got used to it and was just like whatever like I don't care anymore but the moment it hit me was when I realized oh shit I'm almost done with my book which means it will soon be time to promote and market it. And in this day and age, a lot of artists are kind of left to the promotion themselves. Like, you know, studios and publishers are gonna be like, you know what, we're gonna promote it for you, but you can't always rely on them. The only person you can truly rely on during these times is yourself. And that's why I was just like, I wanna promote this book and I wanna make sales. I can't continue losing potential customers. So that was the fire that lit under my butt when I realized I need to try to grow followers again. And I would say I started trying in January of 2022, but I literally did not see any results until September of 2022. So that's why I will sometimes just say that patience is key. So now I'm gonna walk through how the growth actually happened again, because for the longest time, when you go on your analytics on Instagram, I've just been having the red bar like top over my green bar for the longest time, but I can happily say that ever since September of 2022, so far I've been continuing to grow. So the first thing I did, instead of just saying posting more often, this is specifically what I did, is I posted one main comic per week and one supplemental piece per week. So in total it was twice a week, but the supplemental piece would either be a reel or a low effort art or illustration thing that I did because there's no way I'm doing two comics per week and for some people they can't do two full illustrations or two full paintings a week but maybe doing one is possible along with one supplemental lower effort piece and I knew it was time for me to just try and do reels even if I really didn't want to I was just like you never know like what if you just do like a few reels and that's all it took for you to just start growing and that's kind of what started happening so I posted one comic per week and then the other post would usually either be a reel of a work in progress or me explaining my process or it would just be a simple illustration of something that just did not take as long of a time to do. But I would say that doing this method only took like maybe the first three months of doing it to work and then after that I kind of just went back to doing one comic a week or one comic every other week even, and I've still been growing ever since. So then the next thing that I think really helped me grow followers again, and I think this one is the most important, like out of all of the things that I'm saying that helped me grow again, this is the one that I will say I constantly focus and think about, which was focusing on what people originally followed my art for. So originally, I feel like Succubishes is really what got an influx of people to start following me many years ago, but I also don't wanna pigeonhole myself into the Succubishes thing and just only be known for that. Like that is my fear as an artist, is just being known for like one thing and that's like the peak of your glory. Like I want to remind my followers that, hey, things are always gonna be changing on my page physically, but the heart and the intention and the experiences of the artist is always gonna be there. So even though I stopped doing the pink succubicious styled stuff, I still focused on just doing my Western anime mix styled of artwork and I fully colored it instead of just doing the pink style. And then what I would do is I would organize my posts under the analytics by which posts brought me the most followers because I wanted to know why. Why did this post bring more people to my page and want to follow me? That was what I was trying to increase again. And while all the art styles and artwork levels were consistent, the only things that were different were the themes, 
the stories and the messages. So I tried to pretty much collect what were the top most popular types of stories that I would create on my page. And those were usually social issues, funny relatable relationship moments or deep internal thoughts or anything that was touching, wholesome and heartwarming. Like those were the things people liked following me for. Then what I would do is I have my handy dandy notebook where I literally write all of my ideas I've ever had and I would categorize story ideas under these different categories. Like I'll put all of my funny, wholesome relationship stories under one list, like anything I could think of that I experienced with my partner and my cats. Then I would have one for like deep or touching or heartwarming. And what I did is every other week I would alternate between the different themes. If you go back on my Instagram, you can literally see what I did where I would post one deeper comic this week and then the next week would be like lighthearted, cute and funny. Then the next week would be back to like deep and then the next week would be like oh, wholesome and funny again. So I kind of do that because I constantly don't want people to think I'm only doing like one thing and I do want to let people know that I have this deep side of myself, but I know that there's a time in life that I can lighten that part because, you know, not everyone who goes on social media wants to see like deep existential stuff and just start thinking about their life. And other people also just don't wanna see funny stuff only and some people want to think and take stuff a little more seriously so I try to serve the best of both worlds. Then the next thing I did which I would say I specifically started around summer of 2022 was I started to diversify my posts. So this is going back to the whole like unified feed look. I felt like that was my downfall more so than my benefit. But once I started adding my supplemental art pieces, which I'm gonna be talking about now, is when I realized that, hey, spicing things up helps people wanna come and be interested in you. So I would start posting reels. While doing reels or just feeling like you had to do it was annoying. I did feel like once I got the hang of it and I kind of became used to my process of doing it, it became fine. I will still say that reels don't really perform that well individually engagement wise for me, like the individual posts themselves don't do amazing. But I do feel like the reels do get exposed to more people who are not originally following you, which then gives them the opportunity to come to your page and see who you are. I would say don't be afraid to show yourself on your feed, even though your feed is mostly art, and don't be afraid to spice it up with different types of reels that could include your face or not. I follow a lot of artists who I will say I don't really vibe with their style, but it's not their art style that inspires me. It's about them as a person, the artist, the person creating the work. It's kind of like when you're inspired by people who are in a career path that you want to follow and you're more interested in that element and their journey and what they did more so than the physical art they created themselves. So a lot of people, especially students, are on social media nowadays because they're trying to get their names out there as well. So if you are an artist on Instagram who is a professional, I highly suggest sharing some of your personal life or your career journey. For the illustrations that I included onto my profile, which was less time consuming than my comics, I would try to focus it again mostly on simple stuff like my life at home with my partner and my cats. Something that people can still relate to but still know that this is you the artist and your life. Simple things like that are a little bit more easily digestible for people when it comes to creating the more supplemental art pieces. Then the next thing that I started to subconsciously start to put more into my comics was once again, I was trying to make my comics as shareable as possible. So usually I would say this is easier for comics than it will be for maybe like visual arts or just an illustration or painting because when you have a comic, you have a story, you have characters. So for me, I would literally take people from my real life or take my personal experiences and choose the stories from my life where I feel like somebody else who looked at this comic 
could literally be like, this is like me and my partner, or this is like me and my mom. This is like me and my sister. And it will make them want to tag their friend or somebody in the comments or even DM it to them. Or sometimes I make a comic that literally says a message that, you know, maybe other people were not are able to articulate into their own words and they would share it onto their stories. And I feel like making shareable content is actually one of the faster ways to grow on social media more so than just making good or objectively good content, which again does not always mean that your art is bad. It's just the level of shareability of your comics is just naturally going to bring more people to your page, which then increases more people potentially following you. Another thing that I do to make my work more shareable is whenever I share my own posts after I post it on my feed and I post it then in my story to let people know that I created a new comic because I feel like sometimes your story audience is different than your in-feed audience. When I do that, I always choose my personal favorite panel from the comic. I would just choose the one that I think is most appealing and put it in my story because people on your homepage will most likely see the first panel cool. Well, if they see it in your story, they might see it twice, but that's why I tend to choose, you know, the second, third, fourth, fifth panel to share in my story so that it, again, spices things up, lets people know that there was more than one page in this comic. And also I mentioned this in the other video, but I do think it's important to make the first page of your carousel post or just the first panel, if it's just a single panel of your post, to be appealing and clickable. And some of those things are making sure the character's face is there, making sure it's not just a background drawing because, you know, from afar, when people see the thumbnail, they might not be as interested. It's honestly just like YouTube thumbnails, but for Instagram. And speaking of sharing your work, of course, cross promote it on any secondary social media platform you have because I mostly use Instagram and YouTube. I do feel like my YouTube audience though is different from my Instagram. I feel like my YouTube audience is more of people who want to learn, who want to be in this industry, who maybe want to follow a similar career path or lifestyle versus Instagram. I feel like it could be anybody out there who just wants to read a good story and just enjoys reading your comics like they're in the newspaper or something. So those people might not necessarily be interested in creating art, but on YouTube, when I talk about, you know, giving art advice and stuff like that, it gives me an opportunity to showcase the work from my Instagram and either use it as an example as to, you know, a piece of advice that I'm telling them. Or every time I post a comic on Instagram, I will then share it on the community post and just be like, hey, I made a new comic, but I can only fit like the first five panels. So if you want to finish the rest, you got to go on my Instagram. Here's the link. And then the last thing that I think really worked for me personally was mixing up my hashtags. I don't know how dedicated or diligent a lot of people are with you know, posting hashtags with their work anymore, but I do feel like it has helped me and there are a good few ones that I will recommend that I think continue to boost my posts anytime I create them. So these are the ones that I personally use like on every post that I will make most likely. I'll use artists on Instagram, artists of Instagram, comics, illustration, drawing, artist support, these are the standard ones I will almost always use, but then the additional ones that I add will be based on what the comic is about. So if it's a comic about cats, I'll post hashtag cats, or I have two tabby cats, so I'll do hashtag tabby cats of Instagram, or hashtag tabby. I will squeeze myself in those searches that people normally wouldn't expect to find comics like mine in because, you know, I feel like whenever people post photos of their cats, it feels more natural to be like, hashtag cat. But when you do an art piece or a comic or an illustration, you don't really think about tagging the elements that exist within your art piece. You just think of it as an art piece. If I have a relationship based comic, I'll hashtag relationships, hashtag couples, things that again, you normally don't really think about with tagging with your art. I feel like artists deserve a space in the normal human post space. 
Anyway, those are pretty much all of the pieces of advice that I have thus far. I know it's been a very frustrating process to lose followers in the past few years because it's very discouraging. And some of you might be wondering, well, you know what, I already gave up on Instagram. Why should I care about Instagram? Like as annoying as it has been in the past years, I still feel like that is still the easiest place to share your art and be a part of a larger community in a more direct way. I'm pretty sure you can still find it on other platforms, but I just feel like on Instagram, there's just a more direct community you have access to, especially when it comes to artists. So thank you to Casetify again for sponsoring today's video and making videos like these possible. And thank you for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one.